Welcome to Boundless Love Podcast. Here it's all about next level approach to love, relationships, and sex. I'm your host, Sofia Sundari. Welcome to episode 3. We are going to talk about how to find God through sex. I'll share about a very powerful spiritual tradition that affirms that this is possible. I will speak about my experience of that. I will speak about specific ways how any person and any couple can achieve that. This episode is also sponsored by my online course called Limitless Love. This online course is built specifically for people who want to experience love beyond ordinary, who want to experience sex beyond ordinary, and who really want to be in a relationship as agents of each other's transformation. So you can go ahead and check out this online course as a listener of my podcast you're also receiving a special discount. So go ahead and check it out. The link is on my website, sofiasundari.com. Ancient tradition called Tantra is a tradition that, unlike most other spiritual traditions, includes sexuality into our spiritual path. Traditionally, it is said in other spiritual traditions, in most common spiritual traditions that sex is something that will always act as a distraction from spiritual path. It is something that's not really compatible with spirit or with God, with a divinity. It is said in those traditions that you have to transcend your desire as well as your desire for sex, and only then you become pure, only then you actually can recognize the divine. And this split has become detrimental to our overall experience as humans, because somewhere deep inside of every single being on this planet there is an ingrained belief that something in our humanness is preventing us from recognizing our divinity, that something within us is inherently wrong, something is inherently dark, and this darkness just won't allow us to be perfect, won't allow us to recognize ourselves as divine. This has created a lot of confusion, a lot of distortion, a lot of pain, a lot of disconnection. This has created a lot of suffering because sex equals humanity. Without sex, there is no humanity possible. Sex is what created us. Sexual energy is a fundamental energy of our life. It is the creative energy. It is the energy that enables us to even be alive. We all came here because of sex. So we cannot see sex as something sinful. If we were to really believe that sex is sinful, it means that we have to believe that our whole life is sinful. And unfortunately, for many people, that is the case. Tantra, as well as other traditions such as Taoism, such as Western esoteric science, such as Gnostic tradition, some traditions in shamanism, they all have this understanding that transcends this limited view. And the understanding that is presented there, and the path that I've studied most, is the path of Tantra. I've studied Kashmiri Shaivism lineage and Kaula lineage. And this tradition says that sex is not sinful. Sex is not dirty. Sex is in no way separate from our divinity. So intrinsically, there is really nothing that is dirty, that is dark, that is bad about sexuality. Well, you may argue and say, what do you mean? There is so much sexual abuse. There's so much violence in the world. And I have to say, of course, there is so much misunderstanding, so much violence, so much distortion. But this is exact product of this misunderstanding, misunderstanding of this split between the sex and the spirit. It is dangerous and it is scary what people do when they really don't understand this. So, of course, it's our mind that is not pure. Of course, it is the mind that creates those distortions. But sex itself is pure. It's that energy that creates 
the most beautiful thing is that energy that creates a human life and life as such. So how can we recognize this divinity that is so intrinsic in sex? Do you have to be in a relationship to even experience that? No, you don't have to. Actually, you can by yourself practice a great deal and really tap into tremendous depth through accessing your sexual energy. In fact, I recommend that you access your sexual energy ongoing because it is your resource. It is that source of your pleasure. It is a source of your radiance. It is the source of your fullness. So accessing sexual energy all the time, your sexuality is your portal to your eroticism. And eroticism is just when you feel yourself alive as life. So I entirely recommend unlock sexual energy and really let it flow. And there are amazing practices that I teach and that are available in the world that can teach you how to do that by yourself. In this episode, though, I want to focus specifically on how we can practice that together with a partner in a relationship. So it doesn't matter if you are currently in a relationship or not, because that's the knowledge that will be always there available for you. In reality, we cannot separate life, our everyday life, and how we feel about ourselves and how we feel about our relationship from sex, from what happens in the bedroom. The way you show up in bedroom is exactly the way you show up in life. When I see people who work with me, that they are becoming more free in their bodies, more free in their sexuality, more at ease in their relationship, or they attract a relationship that they want with ease, their whole life also is impacted by how they are within their own body, how they feel about their sexuality. Because how you feel about your sexuality determines how you feel about yourself as a human being. At the same time, I also see that when some other clients of mine that get more in tune with their power, that they learn how to be more successful, more daring in their lives, also their energy changes in how they have sex and whether they even want to have sex, because that also happens that people suffer from lack of desire for sexuality. And then there's also general apathy in life that can be seen in most cases. In reality, it's not only about sex. Sex is never just about sex, at least the kind of sex that I'm talking about. And I'm talking about conscious sex, sacred sex. All of your life has to be dedicated to revealing truth. Yeah, It's not only that when you close your eyes and sit and meditate that you are tapping into universal consciousness. It's not that when you practice yoga that you are doing your spiritual practice or that you go to the church or that you pray, whatever your spiritual practice may be. That does not and your spiritual practice. Sometimes people ask me, how can I include my spirituality into my daily life? Because I'm a mom, I have a job, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm busy, you know, I have a normal life. And I have to say, you have to reverse this because your spirituality is the core of who you are, is the essence of who you are. And everything else has to be included into your spirituality, not vice versa. I have a student who, since she started working with me, she really tapped into her priestess self. She took part in my priestess school and she really accessed that really high aspect of her and she was mesmerized that she has this power within her, this priestess power. And first she was wondering, how can I bring it to my life? How can I share it with my daughters? How can I share it with my partner? Because it seems like it's such an intimate space that I don't really want to share with anybody. I don't know how to share with anybody. That's not how they know me. But it didn't take so long until she saw that she can totally share that part not only share that part but she it's like all other parts of her get shared from that part and her kids 
love it. Her kids love to experience their mother in her full blossoming beauty. Her partner loves to experience that because it doesn't have to look a special way. You don't have to wear white and wear special beads on your chest and uh, sit with your eyes closed and be all holy. That's not how spirituality is, or it's not the only way how spirituality can look. Spirituality is all over our lives. There's no aspect of our lives where our spirituality is not welcome. When you feel like you're too much, you're too big, you're too loud, this is a disservice. Just those beliefs are a disservice to all of life. Anyway, in the same way, your whole relationship has to be also dedicated to revealing of truth. If you really want to find God through sex, then you have to be willing to find God in all areas of your life. First and foremost, for a relationship to go into such depth, there has to be a clear field. So you need to decide what is your relationship dedicated to. What are the values of your relationship? What are the standards of your relationship? What is the dedication of your relationship? I suggest that you even make a ritual around this. Be it for your current relationship or even for your future relationship. You can also create a certain ritual for that, for invoking that, for asking for that, for inviting that in. So that's the first step for clarity, that you really have a very clear context. What is that you are doing together? Because it may be many things. It can be so many things. It can be that you are really just one to be friends that live together and hang out and maybe sometimes have sex. Maybe that's how you choose it. Other times, maybe you want your relationship to be a real uh, deep nurturing space where you can really return to. If you want your relationship to be that place that supports your recognition of the ultimate reality, that's a big request. Like, that's a really big high level game you want to play. If you're serious about this, you have to stay serious about this and you have to really eliminate any distractions from your field from that. Your commitment is what makes everything possible. So when you commit to the deepest truth of your heart and you really bring clarity about that and you bring that clarity to your relationship and you bring that clarity to your partner so you clear out the field and you decide what serves it most what serves your recognition of divinity more than anything what serves truth more than anything what is really that path of your soul what kind of relationship will support that for some people it will be very clear that it's a very committed deep relationship with very clear agreements with very clear boundaries where you're not sharing your energy with other people outside of this container this uh, what is commonly referred to monogamy but conscious monogamy when you really decided from clarity from purity from knowing that that's what best serving you at this point of your life and then you make it really really clear you speak with your partner what does that mean to you what do you agree on what are your standards what are your values what are your boundaries and that creates a coherent field yeah so that's a really big one step. It also may be that you want something else. It may be that you want to actually experience non-monogamy and the true calling for you is to be totally open to other people, to explore all the energy that comes into your field and go with it and play with it and engage with it. It may be so. You just need to really decide for yourself what rings true in your heart and be really honest with yourself Because many people are being completely dishonest with themselves and they agree to styles of relationships which just don't feel good to them. But they are so scared to lose their partner, so they agree to something that works for their partner but doesn't work for them. So that's one thing. Clear field about what is your container like. Next piece to the clear field is that you should have no secrets from each other. If you are withholding something, if you are having secrets, if there are some other kind of interactions that you have and you don't want your partner to know about it, this won't allow clarity of the field. And that will be not supportive of your path, of your commitment to truth. 
So make sure that you eliminate all secrets, even if some things you have really valid excuse not to share with your partner because you don't want to burden them with that and you feel like, oh, white lies are good. This will create hindrance in your field. This will manifest as a disturbance in that field. And if you're serious, you don't want that. Now, the next thing to be really aware of is any unsaid things any things you're holding on to, any places where you were hurt or upset or anything that you cannot forgive your partner for. So this has to be also cleared. In my online course, Limitless Love, I'm sharing an exercise called the clear space practice. And through that kind of practice, you really reveal your heart to your partner. You really share what is there for you inside of you and you do so regularly maybe daily maybe every few days maybe every week this is something that you practice in order to invite your partner into your life into your experience you share your experience with your partner and they share their experience with you so it's not just a chatting and catching up it's a really intentional space of clearing things out. And you will be surprised that sometimes things that feel like so difficult to share, there's maybe so much shame, so much guilt for you coming up and sharing certain things. You might be surprised that once you do share them, it feels really good and it really brings your relationship to a whole new level, to a whole new frequency. Next very important thing on this journey of finding God through sex is understanding the art of polarity. Polarity is a really, really important subject and I will have a separate episode about this, about masculine and feminine polarity. It's a big topic and it's hugely misunderstood, but it really has an incredible key for anybody who really wants to play on this high level in relationships and in life as well. Because as I said, it just, you know, when you work on one area of your life, is just inevitably gonna affect all areas of your life. In short, polarity means that the opposites attract each other and uh, we all have two energies within us. It's the masculine energy and the feminine energy. If you don't like those terms, the masculine and the feminine, you can replace them with alpha and omega, for example, or you can replace them with life and consciousness, because really these are the two grand polarity. I love the terms masculine and feminine because that really resonates within me. I can really identify what is masculine energy, what is feminine energy. So I'm going to be using them when I speak to you about those things. But if you don't like those terms, feel free to replace them with something else that resonates with you in your head. So the feminine energy is the part of us that is energy, that is aliveness, that is the experience. It is a part of you that feels, that breathes, that moves. It is your body. It is nature. It is everything about nature. It is water. It is fire. It is earth. It is air. She is all energy. She is all matter. And in the essence of that, she is the goddess and she is love. So really that is the meaning of the word the goddess. It is life, fullness of life, totality of life. It is the goddess and it is the feminine. The masculine is the energy that is witnessing the experience. It is the one that holds space for all this experience to happen, to all of life to happen. You can visualize that the masculine is like the room, the space, and the feminine is everything that is happening in that space. So the masculine is the consciousness. It's the unchanging part of us. So no matter what is happening, there is something that is untouched, unshaken. That is the masculine. Both those polarities also manifest on a different level, on a horizontal level. So the feminine will be the part that is changing, 
She changes her mind. She um, is moving. She is constantly in action. She is constantly in movement. Yeah, she is also very non-linear. Her movement is different to the masculine movement because this movement is non-linear. It is cyclical. It is not goal-oriented. It is in the flow that is the feminine. She is also incredibly receptive. She feels it all. The masculine energy is a directive energy. It's that energy that goes towards the goal. And ultimately, the goal is emptiness. The goal is pure consciousness. The goal is to return to that empty space that gives space to everything else, that gives space to life. So those two polarities, we all have them, regardless of your gender identity, regardless of your biological gender, we all have them both. The masculine is the go-getter, and when the masculine gets what it goes for, then there is that moment of stillness, and ultimately that stillness is always there, and that's the masculine principle. The feminine is the receptive is the feeling, is the flowing, and ultimately it's all of life. So before I go further, I need to explain to you about the three stages. Famous author David Data speaks very beautifully and very deeply about those three stages of relationships, three stages on which we can experience ourselves. And none of the stages is better than the other, but each of those have certain attributes. And without understanding the stages, we cannot really understand this very high way of meeting, very high way of relating between the masculine and the feminine. So I'll go very briefly through the stages. The first stage has a sense of obsession with the identity. There's a lot about me, 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 the small me. This is what happened to me. This is what they did to me. These are my wounds. This is my pain. This is what you've done to me. So there's a lot of blame, understanding, or a lot of unconscious lack of understanding of who you are, what you feel, how those feelings really impact your relationship. In the second stage, it's different because here we come to a place of self-sufficiency. Here we do the therapy, we understand our wounds, we take responsibility for our wounds, and then we, in terms of relating, we start to negotiate with each other. We can say, I want to do that, and then you do that in exchange. So here we kind of come to this balance, we come to this very healthy type of relating where both take responsibility for how they feel, who they are, what impact they have on each other, and uh, they constantly negotiate with each other. What one does, what the other does, who does the dishes, who does the laundry, who picks up the kids, who does other chores in the house. Uh, So there is this very comfortable place. Also on this level, people can enter into various agreements. They can enter into agreement about their type of relationship and um, how to navigate multiple relationships and uh, whose needs require what. That's a second stage. It's a healthy stage. There is a lot of inner awareness. There is a capacity to negotiate the needs and requirements. And then comes the third stage. And in the third stage, you choose to play that highest game. You choose to drop all the concepts, and you choose to only do that which serves your freedom and the freedom of all beings on this planet. You choose to only do that which serves love. You choose to only do that which serves truth. And your relationship becomes that kind of relationship that takes you to God. So it's only on that level we can talk about this. And this To come to this level, we need to do a lot of healing. We need to do a lot of inner work. There's just no way to come here. You may have sometimes spontaneous big experience of the universal consciousness, even on the first stage, even in the second stage. You can have that anytime. You can have it during dance. You can have it during lovemaking. You can have it during meditation. You can have those spontaneous big experiences of grace. This is what it is. It is grace touching you, touching you on the shoulder, kissing you, saying, hey, come here. Come here, join, come dissolve into this grace. But it won't be sustainable unless you've done 
this real deep inner work. Deep inner work on understanding your wounds, deep inner work on forgiving, deep inner work on liberating yourself, stripping yourself naked, coming to that death of identity. So you need to die multiple times before you really start living, before you really can start living in this big way, recognizing the divine that is permeating your experience. And then when you come to the third stage, you need to choose your polarity and that polarity in which you will play with your partner. And that will, of course, not mean that you will only be in that polarity, because you need to be entirely self-sufficient in order to come to that stage. You cannot blame your partner and tell them, oh, you're not masculine enough for me, oh, you're not feminine enough for me, and expect to have those big states of God-realization through your sex and through your relationship. You have to be beyond that blame, beyond those expectations. You have to be in a state of surrender. And at the same time, you can still strategize and you can still bring an intelligent choice to what serves best that revelation, what serves best that path that you choose to walk. And you will need to choose in which place within yourself do you really feel that you reveal the best of yourself. Where is your deepest gift? Is it in your feminine or is it in your masculine? Is it in your capacity to surrender and melt as love? Is it where you are the happiest? Is it really that place that feels like home to you? Maybe it's scary and it, it is scary to surrender. But still, there's something deeper than the fear that is just a yearning for that. Then, clearly, your preferred polarity is the feminine. Or do you want to experience that your partner is melting in your arms and you are there, alert and awake, alive as consciousness, embracing all of life? Is that which really turns you on, where you feel your partner melting under you, surrendering, exuding the radiance that just nurtures you, that caresses you, and you are there with strong spine and soft heart, receiving all that, holding all that, guiding all that. Is it that which you truly want? Is it that that truly makes you happy on a deepest level, beneath insecurity and fear and mistrust? If so, then your preferred polarity is the masculine polarity, and that's where your greatest gift is. If this is clear, then you choose to cultivate that in your relationship. You choose to cultivate that in your day-to-day -day life. You prioritize that polarity. At the same time, you don't abandon the other polarity. Because if you were to truly just melt in your feminine and completely not have any masculine inside of you, that just wouldn't work that way. In order to actually really melt into your family, you need to have a very strong masculine inside of you that allows you to do that. That's the only way. But regardless of how you cultivate it, the way you show up with each other, it's always in your preferred polarity, in that gift polarity. And then the same for the masculine. Yeah, Also the masculine has to find ways to allow his feminine to be there. Yeah, if it's the man who is choosing to be in the masculine energy, he needs to allow his feminine to also be there and find his nurturing in ways more than one. However, if it's a man who chooses to be in a masculine polarity, he also needs to nurture his feminine in various ways. Yeah, maybe it's by going in nature, maybe it's by expressing his creativity, maybe it's by practicing certain arts like singing, or dancing, that will also nurture his feminine. I mean, depends actually on the way he dances, because in the, in the tango, for example, it's a very strong dance which reflects those polarities. The woman is always in her feminine when she's dancing tango, and the man is always in his masculine, fully directed, clear, giving the purpose to that dance. But when he meets her, he chooses to be in his masculine. So when they go out, he chooses to be in his masculine, which means that he knows what time they have to leave, where do they go, what do they have to do, what is awaiting them. He is in charge of that whole experience. 
He holds it in his consciousness and he directs it. When they meet in the bedroom, the same thing. He is fully in charge. He knows that he is directing what's gonna happen. At the same time, he needs to be responsive to her. He needs to be sensitive to her because he realized that she gives the energy and he directs that energy. But he needs to feel her energy in order to direct her in a way that really serves love. It's not that he comes with his own agenda and tells her what to do. No, he is in a communion with her, so he is responsive to her and he offers her that guidance that she is yearning for. And the feminine, she is choosing to be in that feminine in their relating. So she's not gonna tell him what to do. She's not gonna direct him. She's not gonna criticize him. She's not gonna judge him. She's gonna be the energy. She's gonna be life. She's gonna be in her radiance. She's gonna be sharing her beauty, her love, ongoing, moment by moment. And that will nurture her and that will nurture him and that will nurture everyone around and the way they meet in sex also she will be that energy that life force she will allow herself to fully unleash she will move she will moan she will express as life as love and uh, what is most incredible is that when this is really practiced deeply, when there is a really profound meeting that takes place, the polarities cancel each other. Because when plus and minus come together, they cancel each other. And that's what we are really yearning for. We yearn to experience that completeness, that totality. We yearn to experience God. And that's how we can experience God through sex, by fully offering our natural gift to each other. And then by cultivating that polarity, by meeting from that place of clarity, by not allowing anything to hinder that feel, that magic that you are creating together, that's how you invite God onto this planet, into your life. So to illustrate how polarity works in a relationship and in sexuality, I'll share with you how we are practicing it with my beloved Oliver. So for us, polarity is a really, really important daily practice. It's not something that we just do to have a better relationship and a better sex life, although of course it contributes to that, but it's just our preferred way of living life. It's our preferred way of delivering our gifts to the world. I know that I thrive most in my feminine. It's just my happy place. I had to develop a strong masculine to create all the things I've created, to create my business, to actually give space to my feminine. And I will still be developing my masculine. It's really important for me. It's something I developed through my spiritual practice, through my meditation, through my prolonged meditation retreats. But in life, in my daily life, Life, what is most important for me is that my feminine feels completely unleashed because I know that's my happy place. I know that's where my greatest gift lies. And for Oliver, it's complementary polarity. It's his masculine, which is his happy place. I am planning to invite him on the podcast and interview him on uh, various subjects. But what he says is that through me, he accesses life in such a full way that nurtures him in a profound way and that empowers him to be even more in his gift in his masculine. So what we do every day or most days is we start the day by separating and we go into our separate practice spaces where we focus on doing our practice. So for him, it's the masculine practice. He sits in stillness, he meditates, he does also some other masculine practices, something intensive, the type of breath work, for example. And for me, I go into my very, very cozy, soft, sweet space where I practice my feminine work. 
And what I do is I do anything I want that brings me into my emotions, that brings me into my flow, that brings me into my body, where I really feel my body and move my body and nurture my body in a way that feels just delicious and yummy to me. And so then we meet. And we are doing it as often as we possibly can. Sometimes it's every day, other times it's a bit more rare. And please don't take it as a example of a role model. It's uh, something I'm sharing just to illustrate how it can be used, but uh, please do not assume that that's what I suggest for you or that something that would work for you. Everybody needs to find their right way and you should never feel under pressure to do more practice, to make love more than it is natural for you. In this podcast, we will speak about different things that are related to that, uh, but just uh, here I need to mention this. So then when we meet and we have our date, he is already fully in his masculine. I am already fully in my feminine. So it's a very natural way to be extremely attracted to each other, extremely drawn to each other. And then when we are playing, when we are already allowing our sexual energy to flow, then what happens as we continue to cultivate that polarity in that moment of intimacy, he goes very deep into stillness. And if he moves, if he says something, if he expresses as anything. All his expression comes from that deep stillness. Other times he does not move at all. He just stays in stillness. And his stillness is so liberating for my feminine. So it's completely natural for me to start moving in very expressive ways sometimes. Other times there's still movement, there's a lot of life force, but this movement may be barely visible. I feel permission to unleash my emotion, to really feel deeply, to make sounds, to breathe deeply and express myself fully, to give space to my radiance, to give space to my love completely. And th this kind of meetings, they are so deeply nurturing for us. And what is really amazing about this is that not only the states of orgasmicness that we enter while we are making love in this way, and those states, they were for a separate episode, of course, but indeed uh, a profound experience of consciousness, a profound experience of totality of life that takes place. But what is even more important is that it does not end with our lovemaking. The lovemaking continues actually throughout our days where we feel so nurtured and so boosted by our intimacy that this experience stays in the background no matter what we do throughout the day. So with this I'm wrapping up and in this episode I talked about various traditions that that accept sexuality as part of spiritual path. I talked about how to find God through sex, how to create a clear field in your relationship. I talked about the three different stages of relationships, of your inner transformation that David Deida particularly talks about. And I talked about the art of polarity in detail. So good luck in your exploration, good luck in really determining which is your true gift. And I want to say that it's just so beautiful to practice this. It's so beautiful to practice this in an intimate communion with someone that you really love and you really cherish. And what is really amazing about this is that it is so natural. We think that divinity, that spirit is something supernatural, is something that is beyond what is accessible to an average human being, something that takes so much work, something that takes so much striving, so much hard work. But in fact, it's the most natural thing. It's accessible to all of us. We just have to remove those things that we've put on top of that. And by practicing, that's what we are doing. We are removing those blocks and we are recognizing ourselves as truth. So I hope you loved this episode and please go ahead and subscribe to this podcast and I would love it if you would also leave a review. In this way we can help more people find this knowledge 
and open up to love beyond what they ever thought was possible. Thank you for being here.